grab your popcorn, kick back and relax, because it's time for some more carnage. So, in today's video, we got two absolutely ridiculous hits that I want to show you guys on Foxtrot Unboosted for the series that is still continuing. Uh, just to show you the task force, so it is a five-man, so it is scaled the same as a five-man group. Because that is important. For anyone who doesn't understand that, the smaller the group size, the harder the operations are scaled. I've never understood why it's the smaller the group size, because to, to be honest, in my opinion, it should be... Groups with more members, it should be scaled harder for them, in my opinion, but whatever, it is what it is. So, uh... Five mans at the moment get it the hardest. Five man, 50 mans get it the easiest, apparently. So, it is what it is. But enough of the negativity, because we got two incredible hits. So, I'm going to show you guys, because these are both done by Tika. I am going to be doing a hit on Quantum in a minute. Um, that'll be off screen. Um, I'm expecting it to be a bit of a fail, because I'm trying Tank Medic on Quantum, and... To be honest, it has an incredible amount of ice, and it's just far beyond, like, what my troops should be capable of. So, um, AZ with, what is it, with Brick. So, I'll put it the half time so I can show you guys the ice, because I don't want to miss anything. Uh, so, 100 and not, 294 for building health, uh, 97 for building damage. So, you can see the flare here. So he's going to be doing the typical style landing with Zookas, so just one landing craft after the other. Um, important things to note is the range of this rocket, and the kill spot's going to be... I don't know how most of you guys would say that. Uh, about 7 o'clock? That's how I usually say it. Oh no, sorry, he's going to do it at 5. That's my bad. That's the scout that I was doing. Um, so you can see the rocket, so I'll pause here. So we got a rocket here. We got a bunch over here, we got some here, we got two over here, which should be out of range, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so the typical, like, flamethrowers, machine guns all over the place, these ones are out of range, so, uh, pretty ridiculous for, for this base. If I'm not mistaken, this had, um, what was it, about 790k health? So that, that's about average for Black River in terms of health. Black River never has a lot of health on the core. It's usually like the placement of rockets and all the buildings that are important. So I paused it just because of one thing. He placed the smoke up here first and then this one where his Zookas are going to be. And the reason why he did that was because he wants, his, he wants that smoke up here to disappear first, which is going to reveal his critters. And that's going to keep his Zookas safe. However, that one critter peaked and lost him his delay. His Zookas didn't group up how he was expecting under there, so he lost a great stack of them to that flamethrower, unfortunately. So, had to shock early because of his loss of the building delay. He still got it. Even with all of the Zookas he lost to the flamethrower, he still managed to get the kill. Which was 790k health or something. Um, but for anyone who wants to ever look at the exact amount of health. If I haven't put it in the uh, video. If I haven't edited it in. Which is probably safe to say I haven't. Um, because normally I don't edit that in. The, the cores always have 200k health. As like the base health. And then it's plus whatever the ice statue is. So it's like. It'd be like 200k plus. 294% and that'd, that'd equal the end amount. And I'll just show an example here and I'll actually bring up Quantum because that's the base I'll be hitting after the, I finish recording the video. Uh, so you can see this has 200k as the base health and that 524% is actually this building health statue here. And that's, that's how you work out the health if you ever wanted to know that. Um, so... Let's look at assembly, because this is a, an absolutely ridiculous hit. So, by the time I upload this, I should have already uploaded the other hit on assembly, which was all scorches, and uh, we'll just bring up the base here. 
pause it. Alright, so the previous hit we did with the old Scorchers, we brought them up here, cleared these few buildings, which wasn't really too viable because there was an extra cannon, uh, but that's not the main problem. We have a Shock Blaster here and a Shock Blaster here. Now, this one here means we've got a smoke maybe just a bit earlier. And it's probably going to get a few shots off on ones that start hitting stuff up here. The main problem though is this one. It has full range behind the core, which is going to stop this hit from ever being possible. Now, because this base has a little bit less force points than the other one we did, um, there's not so much going on near the beach area down here. And that opened up something really nice. It made the smoking cost a little bit less to get up there. So that was great, really great. So you can see this mortar here doesn't have range past the two cells. And this rocket pretty much has the same problem. So the, the idea here is we're going an absolutely ridiculous hit. And I was actually, I, I still think, and even Tika agrees after he did it that all Zookas would be way better for this hit than uh, Zookas and a boat of Scorcher, but for the video's sake, to be honest, we both agreed that the Scorcher included would be the more fun attack to see on this base, so for anyone who's never done this hit, um, it, is, it requires a ridiculous amount of gunboat energy, absolutely ridiculous. And the fact that he was managed to do this hit unboosted is an amazing testament to what he to what his skill is. So um, this actually was really surprising. So borderlining on the range of that boom cannon, it did actually get the shot off on his scorcher, which was a little unfortunate that it went after the scorcher instead of bazooka. But it is what it is. So that's his second flare. So he's gonna start smoking now. Uh, I'll just pause the video. So in chat, we were actually talking about this. For me, I have a bit more GBE than he has. I can afford. I know that I can afford, without the Scorcher included, I can actually afford three flares, nine smokes, uh, battle orders, two shocks, two critters. That's what I can afford unboosted, and that's that brings me to my next point. Um, because there's a few things I just need to cover in this video. People sort of haven't fully grasped the concept of unboosted hits. What, there's, there's a few things that make unboosted hits so amazing. Firstly, if you're doing the hit, it teaches you a lot about GBE management and what you're able to accomplish. It also means you've got to scout the bases a little better, which gets you into that really nice habit of doing that. Um... It also teaches you better strategy. So when that when you do boost, it makes your hits that little bit easier, that little bit more efficient, and that makes you a better player. It also, on a as a as a nice little added bonus, it saves you a lot of powder. And when you're doing a global leaderboard push in a task force, there are going to be bases that you can't do unboosted. You're going to need that little bit of powder, even if it's not much. Maybe it's two powder or something but you're going to need it. Also, because it's a five-man group and you're leaderboard pushing, you might want to spend that two powder just to guarantee yourself the win. So, um, I thought I'd explain that because this hit is absolutely ridiculous how far he stretched out his GBE. So you can see his smoke placement and exactly how perfect it is. And I want, I really want to show how perfect this last smoke was. If it wasn't for Brick going past the flare here, which, to be honest, I was surprised she went past it. I thought she would have sat on the this side. So that's where he placed his flare. I just wanted to make sure I got that. Uh, so I didn't have to rewatch it. Um, so shocking the shock launcher here. Notice he hasn't hit a single Zooka. Despite the fact that that Scorcher was almost surrounded by Zookas at that point. Like, he would have had to get the very edge of that shock, launch, that shock bomb on his Scorcher. So... That was an amazing placement. Placing critters just to be safe. Boom. There it goes. I accidentally had the timer on the core. Uh, over the core health there. But he managed to just get his last shot off. Before that flamethrower tore through all his Zookas. So an absolutely amazing feat. The fact that he was able to do that. 
Um, and in typical uh, Carnage style, I have forgotten to show you the ice. Yay me. Um, and I actually don't remember how much health this had, to be honest. I know it was a fair bit. I think it was around 800k. In the 800k range. Uh, 204%. For the building health and 69% for the building damage. So, being the lower force point base, uh, you shouldn't expect anything too intense ice wise. But I thought you guys would enjoy that hit because how far he stretched his gunboat energy and how exactly how much he was able to do, even with deploying a scorcher which costs 12 gunboat energy, which I might add. When smoking over that much distance, it's just ridiculous. Like, the fact that he was even able to afford the stuff he afforded at the end was re is absolutely insane. So, I thought you guys would enjoy that hit. I hope you guys can appreciate exactly how amazing that actually was. Um, because really, if you're not doing it, it's so much easier to watch an attack and think it's easy to perform. And then actually doing it, you realize exactly how hard it actually was. Like, even just watching that, to me, it looked easy. But, like, when you when you actually attempt it, and I have attempted that hit before, which is a, why I can appreciate it as much as I am. Like, I have tried that hit before and failed horribly. So, like, the, the, that shock placement on the Scorcher was so precise and so amazing... In fact, it was so so precise. I want to show that in slow motion just so you guys can see that. Um, so we will four times it just so we get up there a little quicker so you don't have to wait so much. Because to be honest, I find this to be incredibly like godlike, to be perfectly fair with you. The timing on it was just... I can't even put it into words. So I will half times it here. So you guys can see the timing. So you seen when he pressed, and that was for the smokes, and that that one just then was for the uh, the shock bomb. Bam! So you seen the Zookas were like just in range of that shock launcher. Uh, sorry, the shock bomb, and it managed to hit just before they walked into it. So it did walk into a boom mine there, which I actually I did know it happened, but I didn't really catch it in the commentary. I didn't mention it. Um, so, I might as well just show the rest of the attack. So, he did shock some of his Zookas there. I didn't realize that. Uh, so, I guess that played a really big part in the amount of uh, damage he was able to do to the core there. Because, obviously, if he had a shock just a tad too much, he probably would have missed that by, like, what? 40k, 50k, 60k? Something like that, I'd imagine. Um, so, exactly how much he was shocking would have played a big role in that attack so anyway i think that was that's been a video guys i really hope you guys have enjoyed this um because to be honest we got kind of screwed with this operation black river was the only base we haven't done that spawned that we hadn't done yet so we will i was sort of looking for different styles of hits that might be possible on some of these other bases duality and strange attractions were just ridiculously easy so well, easy compared to the versions we've already posted on them. So, I thought you guys would enjoy this anyway. A little bit of a different different style of attacks on this stuff. Uh, that was also the first time Tika has done that hit on assembly. He's done that hit on other bases, but not on assembly before. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, smack the thumbs up button. Definitely give me some feedback in the comment section. Uh, if you're up for that, always love hearing from you guys. Uh, it's always a pleasure reading comments and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.